Hi friends, welcome back to Mule 4 series of learning videos. I am Shiva Tankamani, an Integration Technical Architect. In the past few days, we have been taking a look at uh, different integration design patterns and uh, I'm very happy to note that many viewers liked it and uh, they felt uh, uh, it's beneficial and uh, they requested me to continue this. So uh, here is another video. So in this video, we are going to uh, discuss about uh, broadcast pattern. Let's get started. So as we know, every integration design pattern is designed uh, to address some specific problem uh, that's continuously recurring. So in this way, a broadcast pattern is uh, attempting to resolve a specific problem in, uh, in replicating the data. Say for example, uh, the problem is uh, when the data is available or created in one place, uh, in the modern um, uh, multi-channel world, uh, the data has to be replicated across uh, different channels and uh, that too they have to be replicated as quickly as possible because we can't uh, delay the propagation of data and uh, that might lead to loss of business or loss of data and uh, it might lead to some uh, unwanted consequences. That's what we are going to uh, address. So the solution is the application is able to replicate the data suitably across different channels and uh, the most importantly that has to be with the highest accuracy and with uh, less likely issues uh, and uh, as fast as possible. Now let's consider uh, a practical use case on when or how this uh, uh, integration pattern uh, will be used. So uh, let's assume an online store or uh, um, uh, a retail integration system uh, has multiple systems and uh, uh, I mean the plan is to create uh, uh, data or master data in uh, one system which is uh, likely the master data management system because uh, even though it's a modern world and you can have one system say which is ERP system where you can bring in um, uh, to have multiple features but even then we cannot avoid having multiple systems because uh, uh, having one system to perform 100 different features is also bad and uh, uh, you can't have a big bang issue and then you will be running into issues. So uh, uh, in, a, in an ideal scenario, we will be having the master data management system where master data or golden data is created. So the golden data would mean that uh, it's, uh, uh, it's a pure uh, and uh, valid and the master data that can be referred across multiple systems. Say for example, um, when the e-commerce system has this uh, product, product data has to be unique and it has to be valid and it has to be 100% accurate and it will be kept up to date always. So whenever a new record or the records are created in a, uh, in a master data management or in the ERP system, so the same data has to be replicated into multiple channel like uh, uh, physical stores, online uh, online e-commerce system and order fulfillment system and inventory system and reporting system and uh, business intelligence system. So you have so many systems uh, which helps each other. For example, um, you can't live with uh, uh, online e-commerce system and uh, because uh, um, you can order online and pick up the uh, uh, order or items uh, in the physical store or you need a reporting system uh, where you need to have the business intelligence uh, to identify which product is selling fast in which area in which store etc so you, you can't live without uh, these multiple systems uh, designed for unique purposes so um, we need to have a way where uh, the uh, master data created in erp system has to be replicated in uh, different channels and uh, like about 10 years back, we have been using this uh, ETL systems where uh, there are uh, um, ETL tools like our batch processing system was running to take the data uh, from ERP system and then replicating overnight to the multiple other systems. But however, uh, these uh, uh, system, this kind of practice is out, uh, out of date because uh, in the modern world, uh, uh, immediately you create a product and has to be reflected and uh, as you delay, you lose one day of business. But nowadays, even when a product is created and it is advertised uh, to make it as early as possible and uh, uh, users are uh, 
um, flying fast uh, in order to get this uh, immediately on the first day itself. So even if you delay one or two hours, it's going to bring in uh, loss of business. So um, the ideal solution is now to have uh, uh, modern real-time APIs uh, like MuleSoft system where you create an API where uh, uh, the data is replicated immediately uh, in a near real-time or a real-time basis to take the data and replicate across multiple channels. So this is the use case that we are going to see and uh, this is not easy to be defined in 5-10 minutes like uh, within one video. But uh, I can give you some high level synopsis of uh, how uh, we can implement this and also what are the different uh, areas that you need to focus like error handling or uh, uh, how to make it 100% accuracy. So I'll walk you through all this uh, in this video. So let's get started with the demo. I've created a Mule 4 flow and we are going to see uh, uh, the use case and then uh, how we are going to do the data replication. So I have created a simple table uh, for this purpose where uh, uh, we, we need to assume that uh, we have a, a master data of products uh, created and available in this uh, database. So we have a, a product table with uh, ID, product ID and SKU ID and the product name. So we have uh, items available and I have created it uh, for a demo. And when you select, you can see here this ID, SKU and name appearing. So this is the uh, uh, data that we are going to replicate across uh, multiple channel. So what we are going to do here is we have a database operation and uh, this time we are not uh, going to use HTTP because HTTP event is the manual event or system driven event which is again triggered by another system or uh, at the end it has to be the user uh, that triggers manually. But however this is a system uh, created event so we are going to use the database on table row. So uh, you can see here now the, the database icon appears at the left at the event uh, uh, front. So uh, this is going to serve as an event that, that triggers the data whenever uh, the table is updated with a new record. So that's what uh, we are going to use and the component is uh, on table row under the database. And uh, so we will use the database configuration as usual. So I have created my local uh, database uh, configuration data here. And we are going to use this table, which we have uh, created here, which is a product. And you should be able to see this product here. And you can choose from there. And uh, we are going to choose the watermark and ID uh, column. So um, the watermark column is used by uh, integration tool to decide what is the latest data that get uh, updated and uh, so the event is triggered whenever the new record is inserted which is greater than the value that appears in the watermark column. So that is the purpose of watermark. So we are going to use this ID either you can use ID or SKU ID or the combination of both. So now uh, the column that we are going to use this ID and ID column is also ID. So these are the things that make uh, the process effective. And if you don't give this watermark column, what happens is every time the event is triggered uh, for the particular frequency, it will fetch likely to fetch the entire set of records and then it will uh, lead to performance issues. So you need to design uh, in such that uh, you have a watermark and ID column uh, uh, specially designed for this purpose. Uh, so, and then you have, since it's an event, you need to trigger it uh, based on a certain duration. So we are going to trigger this once in uh, uh, five seconds. This is based on your requirement. For example, uh, how soon or how frequently you want to replicate the data. Uh, I mean, this, there are pros and cons in both. If you have less frequency every time um, it's using a lot of infrastructure and then uh, lots of... Uh, process runs uh, so frequently uh, so but uh, if you say um, once in four hours or once in eight hours again it's uh, it, it might take a delay so you can uh, plan this frequency accordingly for the demo purpose I'm having uh, uh, to trigger this uh, once in five seconds and uh, uh, so that's it 
and this is the configuration that's needed and we are going to introduce logger to see how it's what data it's getting triggered so first let's investigate and then let's go step by step on how to process them so i'm going to say um, uh, new record received and uh, we will display the payload and this should be sufficient to demonstrate this and uh, let's uh, start the application the application is started up and what we are going to do now is uh, we are going to uh, go to the database and then we are going to insert uh, new records so let's let's insert the new record uh, with uh, id 2 and uh, sku id is 234 and uh, let's introduce uh, iPhone 7X. So uh, this is the product that we are going to introduce and uh, it got inserted and now you have uh, two records. Now if everything got uh, correctly configured uh, then we should have this log appearing and uh, uh, this triggered the data. You can see here uh, uh, the first one is uh, iPad and the next one is iPhone. So both are triggered here and uh, this is working as expected because uh, as soon as you insert uh, one new record, uh, this is going to create an event and then it's going to process this. So now what we are going to do is to create uh, uh, multiple tables uh, for our demonstration purpose uh, so that we will assume these are uh, uh, different systems. So let's say uh, product uh, uh, SFDC and uh, so we will assume that uh, uh, Salesforce is the ERP system and then we are going to create the record there and let's create it, we create it and we are also going to uh, uh, create a product uh, e-commerce. And we created e-commerce uh, table. And we will create one other uh, um, system uh, called uh, fulfillment. So you have uh, order management system and also you have uh, order fulfillment system. So let's create this. We have created. So we have now uh, uh, four different uh, DB table. One is the product which is a master data, which is a golden data. And others are systems like Salesforce system, e-commerce system, and uh, order fulfillment system so uh, this is the these are the tables where we are going to replicate the data once the data is inserted into the product uh, table so we have uh, all the other systems and the data tables uh, created but however uh, we should not rush into the solution and uh, to i mean uh, don't always feel like uh, completing the requirements and then uh, uh, get the solution working but it might not be right so we, we need to design it properly say for example now if you want to fulfill the i mean requirements quickly then what you can do is uh, uh, you can use uh, database and you can use insert uh, three times and one for uh, e-commerce one for uh, fulfillment and one for uh, Salesforce but this is not correct so uh, what happens is there are uh, these are three different systems we have created a database just for a demonstration purpose so this could be a database or this could be a web service or this could be a FTP so uh, so when we deal with the different channels uh, and you will have uh, different channels working in uh, having different infrastructure and different pace so if you have this uh, you need to then uh, take care of the transaction systems. What if these two succeeds and this one fails or uh, this succeed and these two fails and you cannot keep track of uh, those uh, records that are inserted in uh, system A or system B or system A and C but not in B. That's going to be difficult and uh, that's that will be an anti pattern and that's not the proper integration design pattern. So we are going to follow uh, other set of integration patterns because uh, sometimes uh, the solution might not be achieved within a single design pattern. Now you need to use a couple of other design patterns. 
So what we are going to do here is I'm going to explain the uh, methods. So here, uh, first we are going to use this uh, uh, message uh, publishing. So for that we will be using topic subscribers because this doesn't uh, uh, require uh, the transaction management because which is uh, error prone. You don't need to have the headache of uh, transaction handling. So what you can do is you can simply publish data once, whichever created uh, from the database and put it in, put it as a message. And uh, you can have uh, subscribers listening to the uh, message, incoming message. And then each channel uh, working on its own independently to push the data into the system designated. So uh, this has multiple advantages. You can take the data and convert it into the canonical form. So a canonical standard uh, will give you uh, exhaustive list of fields which are available in system A, B and C and you can suitably design and uh, and then you can uh, push it to different systems and each system will convert uh, to its designated system format. For example, this might uh, get the data in the XML and this might require in JSON format and this might be in uh, CSV format. So you can uh, deal with that effectively by using this uh, uh, topic subscriber system. So we can start applying that uh, design and uh, we need to remove these three uh, individual database insert. Okay, and then we will use uh, JMS. And we are going to use JMS publish. And uh, we have uh, started up uh, uh, active MQ. So let's uh, copy this uh, and let's create this configuration. Now we need to add the JMS connector and we will add dependency and we need to choose uh, inline configuration uh, for the factory configuration and replace this uh, broker URL with this uh, which we have uh, copied the TCP TCP connection so we will put it here and the username is uh, default uh, admin and password is admin and let's test connection successful let's say okay and we need to choose the destination and before that uh, um, let's open the um, uh, web console and we need to give uh, localhost and we will choose uh, active MQ broker. So now we are going to the topic. Let's go to topic and topic name will be, uh, we will say product and let's create it. So we have created a, a new topic called the product. This here, the destination is uh, product and we need to choose destination type instead of queue we need to choose topic because uh, the topic uh, subscriber is used to uh, to publish once and then consume multiple times and uh, it's okay to send uh, always a correlation ID so that's okay and uh, since we have created the configuration and we need to restart the application Let's restart. So I have created a, a topic uh, consumer three times, one for Salesforce, one for e-commerce, one for fulfillment. Because I passed the video because I don't want to bore you when I was creating these three different uh, configuration. And I have also created three different database where I inserted uh, so it's, it's almost the same I replicated for uh, uh, three different uh, database tables. And if you, if you have doubt on how to create this uh, uh, topic consumer, I have published a separate video on how to 
publish the message into the topic and how to consume it multiple times you can always uh, refer that and even otherwise i am going to uh, publish this source code into the description below and you can take a look at that and that's going to be the easy one so now let's uh, uh, let's go back and see what happens so i i inserted a skew called uh, 345 and then uh, the name uh, office chair and uh, i have uh, completed it and if you look at it that it's created and inserted into the salesforce table and uh, e-commerce table and the fulfillment table and all the three uh, tables are uh, reflecting that uh, data so let's uh, do the same thing again probably uh, with uh, different data so let's say five and uh, let's give the SKU ID uh, four five six and then let's choose uh, the product name laptop so let me trigger that and it's inserted successfully let's go back and we should get the log of the second one which the first one is what I have already done with office chair and now it's laptop ID 5 q is 446 and uh, we don't see any error and uh, now let's uh, back to this let's copy this let's delete this and this should reflect uh, the laptop and also uh, we will choose uh, uh, fulfillment and this should reflect the same see here laptop and also SFDC so all the three tables are reflecting the data properly so I wanted to demo this and, uh, and now uh, I mean uh, this video is not completed yet and uh, because we need to now ask ourselves uh, that whether this flow is created only for the happy path and it works only for the valid case or for the different uh, error scenarios so we have seen in uh, uh, one of the previous videos on uh, how to i mean even in the integration design patterns we have seen uh, when when something goes wrong uh, how to make it uh, to ensure that uh, guaranteed delivery so what we are going to do is we are going to design an uh, error handling i'll give you the synopsis uh, and i have created a separate uh, uh, i'll show you so this is the error handling that we need to apply so what are the different errors possible so when you read the message and before you publish it into the uh, say for example before you publish it into the topic uh, uh, the messaging system could have been down and while you try to publish to the unavailable topic it might lead to error and uh, what happens uh, is also when you are inserting into the specific uh, system whether it's web service or database table or FTP there could be some uh, connectivity error that might occur so uh, the best way is to uh, handle the error uh, this way and uh, I have also published error handling in a detailed video you can go and refer that the idea here is you choose uh, uh, a destination whether it could be an object store or it could be a folder because we all know that cloud hub doesn't support folder so you can choose always object store where you publish the failed messages and you can put it into the queue so that you can reprocess it or you can have a separate listener that listens all these uh, uh, failed messages and then attempt it once you can do that either once a day or once in an hour etc so let's highlight that and apply the guaranteed delivery design pattern here also uh, so that uh, everything is foolproof uh, uh, in this uh, uh, particular use case so that you have end-to-end <coughs> -end, uh, demo so what we are going to do is we are going to have this error handling here and uh, we are going to choose on an error uh, we can continue let's apply that and here you need to store uh, object store and here you are going to store the data and let's double click to create the object store <coughs> we need to create the configuration for uh, object store 
let's create that. So maximum, we have already seen that an object store should be uh, rare and so uh, you need to limit the number of entries either 100 or 500 and that too for the limited time. So we can say it's uh, retained for uh, say 8 hours. So before uh, this is uh, de getting deleted, uh, the operations team should always monitor and then trigger the mechanism to process those once a day or once in 8 hours. So that's the idea. And uh, the key must be, we need to define uh, payload.id should be the <coughs> uh, key variable or you can use uh, a correlation ID. That will be the best also. So you can use uh, correlation ID. Um, what is the error here? So the key, uh, for some reason, it doesn't appear there. So let's choose the object store here, and then the key will be uh, correlation ID. So it always stores the messages against correlation ID. Correlation ID is uh, created one for every transaction, so you can uh, trust uh, the value. So this will keep in track of this under the store and uh, uh, you need to have a separate mechanism to look into the content of the store uh, by going through retrieve all which uh, I have seen I have published a different video you can refer that so I am showing here on how to preserve those uh, data uh, somewhere for future processing for all different combinations of failures. <coughs> So this happens when something is failed uh, here when we publish it and uh, now here we need to do the same thing. Uh, let's do that. So go to uh, object store. We need to store here and oh, sorry we need to choose the error handling. Continue here and here you need to store the value. And we have already created an object store. We can choose the object store here and choose the ID. ID should be a correlation ID. And uh, let's apply the same for uh, the rest of the two. Store. Here you need to choose the object store again. Again, choose correlation ID. <coughs> Close that. Let's come here. And choose error handling. And now store uh, here. And then let's choose uh, object store. correlation ID. <clears throat> so this completes uh, our error handling uh, as we have seen here uh, when something happens when we insert it into the DB uh, we are handling the error for all combinations so uh, API might go down or web service might go down or database might go down or even our messaging system uh, can completely go down even before uh, uh, we publish the data while publishing it might go down so for all possible combinations of errors, we have this uh, error handling, but instead of folder, we have chosen object object store. And this ops team uh, will look for this uh, uh, presence of this failed data uh, frequently. And if possible, you, don't, you can eliminate the need for this operations team to constantly look at this monitor and then check for the presence of failed data. So you can automatically introduce a listener into this uh, object store. Uh, and uh, may, uh, that uh, listener should have uh, uh, a longer duration it's not it should be immediate because when you uh, get the error into the object store and if you try to immediately process it uh, uh, of course again it's going to fail so to avoid that you can have uh, increased duration like for example once in four hours and once in eight hours so automatically at the end of the day it's going to take all the failed records and uh, push it into the destination system or even you can have a proactive uh, web service call. You can call it if you want to uh, process those uh, whenever you need it instead of 
waiting until the end of the day. So now we have completed the error handling and then uh, the application is restarted. So what we are going to do is we are going to bring down the uh, uh, JMS server. So uh, we will break this and we terminated the ActiveMQ server and uh, there is an error. So now uh, let's try to continue inserting the new record into the database and then see what happens. Let's clear the log. Let's go to the database. Let's choose this. Uh, let's copy it. And I'm going to insert the new record. <coughs> Let's introduce the new product. Let's change this queue ID as 567. And uh, we are going to introduce watch. And let's uh, insert it. It's inserted successfully. And let's see what's happening here. So the trigger got uh, triggered and uh, the new record watch uh, has been uh, retrieved successfully however and you are not able to connect to the uh, jms it shows clearly the jms connectivity error and we have a log that shows something here let's see so it says error occurred and preserving the data into the object store now you can guarantee that uh, the data is preserved into the object store so now we have uh, we, we have uh, implemented this uh, broadcast data integration pattern successfully applying several other patterns inside it uh, namely uh, topic subscriber pattern and uh, guaranteed delivery pattern and so it's an effective way uh, and to conceptualize uh, combining multiple integration patterns uh, to bring in uh, the great api so that's it in this video about uh, broadcast pattern. I uh, hope uh, you felt excited and uh, I am excited as well. So uh, if you feel these videos are useful, please hit uh, thumbs up button and uh, subscribe my videos. That will encourage me to do more useful videos in data integration pattern and uh, 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 integration design pattern and other useful videos. Again, thanks for watching. Bye.